Hey there, everyone. Welcome to Connection Points. Pastor Dennis with you today, and we're going to continue our study in Acts chapter 27. I want to congratulate you if you've stuck with me up to this point. Uh, you've probably made it longer in a in a study of the book of Acts than most uh, than most who have tried in the past. Um, and so we're closing in on the last couple of chapters of the book of Acts here. And, and we see now a transition happening uh, where the Apostle Paul is going to is going to once again begin traveling. Uh, we just came out of the section where he was in Caesarea for a multiple years. Uh, he was there and uh, waiting trial and and dealing with uh, Fe Fe uh, Felix and Festus, the two R Roman governors, and King Agrippa, who comes and and the Apostle Paul is able to give his testimony um, before these governors, military officials, and the king uh, of 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 uh, Israel at that time, and so um, he he counts that an honor and a blessing to be able to have done that and now it's decided that he's that it's time to move him on to uh to rome to his destiny and and so it says in verse 20 uh in verse 1 of chapter 27 it says when he was when it was decided that we would sail for italy now he says that we would sail for Italy, right? This is Luke writing the book of Acts, and Luke is traveling with the Apostle Paul. He's been there with the Apostle Paul in Caesarea, and now he's traveling with him uh, on to Italy, and we'll see how that plays out as we go along. It says, Paul and some of the prisoners, Paul and some other prisoners were handed over to a centurion named Julius, who belonged to the Imperial Regiment. We boarded a ship from uh, Adoramitium, about to sail for, uh, for ports along the coast of the province of Asia. And, uh, and we put out to sea. Uh, Aristarchus, uh, a, Macedonian and, uh, a Macedonian from Thessalonica, was with us. Verse 3. The, the next day we landed in Sidon. Uh, in Sidon. And Julius, in kindness to Paul, allowed him to go to his friends so that, so that they might provide for his needs. From there, we put out to sea again and passed to the lee of Cyprus uh, because the winds were against us. When, when we had sailed across the open sea off the coast of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we landed in Myra uh, in Lucia. There the centurion found an Alexandrian ship sailing for Italy and put us on board. We made a slow headway from <clears throat> for many days and had difficulty arriving in Snidus. In Snidus. So uh, the Apostle Paul was given opportunity um, by the centurion. He had developed apparently a relationship with him and, and out of kindness he allowed Paul to go to his friends and his friends were able to give him supplies that he needed to be able to uh, support himself because even prisoners in those days um, had to still support themselves uh, and take care of themselves, even in prison, um, based on people caring for them. And so uh, he allows that to happen. And then we see just, and, and you could take out a map if you wanted to of those days, uh, or in your Bible, back in the back, there are maps. And it, and it points out all these um, very specific locations that they traveled to. Uh, and, and you can follow that journey exactly the way it says. And it says, when the wind did not allow us to hold our course, we sailed to the Lee of Crete, uh, opposite uh, Salmon. Um, we moved along the coast with difficulty and came to a place called Fair Havens near the town of Lesia. So basically, there is a wind, there is a storm, there are storms that are beating against them that are trying to stop this from happening. Now, I don't want to over-spiritualize this, but I believe this is very indicative of anyone who's trying to live out their calling, live out their destiny and their purpose. Uh, there are going to be storms that are going to come against you. The enemy are going to, is going to send storms to try to come against you, to try to stop your progress, to keep you from getting to where 
uh, God wants you to be because I believe that the devil knows and understands very well that if you live out your destiny and you live out your purpose in life according to God's will and to God's plan, you become a very big danger to him. And he doesn't want that. So he wants to stand in your way every step of the way so that he can prevent you from living into uh, the will of God and the purpose that God has for you. In verse 9, it says this, much time had been lost and sailing uh, much time had been lost and sailing had already become dangerous because um, by now it was after the day of atonement so paul warned them men i can see that our voyage is going to be a disastrous one and bring great loss to ship and cargo and to our own lives but the centurion instead of listening to what paul said um followed the advice of the pilot and of the owner of the ship. Since the harbor was unsuitable to winter in, the majority, uh, the majority decided that they, would, that they should sail on, hoping to reach Phoenix and winter there. This was a harbor in Crete, facing both south, uh, southwest and northwest. So the Apostle Paul gives them advice. He, he, he gives them basically I believe a prophetic word that that the Lord was giving to him uh, to say this is not a good idea. You should not move forward. You should not keep going into this. And we're going to see why next time uh, why he why that advice should have been heeded. But God ultimately shows up once more. But here's the thing: when when we have godly counsel around us, and that godly counsel gives us advice against the 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 storms of the enemy, against the resistance of the enemy, and and gives us um, recommendation, we should. We should listen to that. We should pay attention to that, and we should honor those who God has put into our lives uh, to to help us to stay on the path and to move forward. So today, I, I just want to pray for you um, that that God would give us discernment, give us wisdom, and give us protection against the enemy. So, Father, we just thank you that you have provided everything that we need, just as you did for the Apostle Paul. You have provided everything that we need so that we can live into your purpose and your calling in our lives. And we we just ask, Lord, that you would make us sensitive to your word, to hear the word that you have said uh, and to obey it and to listen to it. And we ask for your protection against the enemy and the storms that he brings into our lives to try and prevent us from living out your will and your purpose. And, and we will trust in you and your power and your protection in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for being with me, everybody. We'll see you soon.